Hi lovely teachers, it's Amy here and today I want to talk to you about mental maths. So I love starting off my daily maths lessons with a quick 5 to 15 minute mental maths activity. So this is something that's going to help them get into the mood and the brain of maths work and get their thinking and their brain juices flowing, but it's also something that you can use as a revision tool. So maybe you're not covering a concept for a few weeks, but you want it to kind of stay fresh in their head and have an understanding of it. So by doing mental maths and covering a range of topics, you can make sure these things are staying in the forefront of their mind and that they're not going to forget the different skills. It's also a great way to practice those basic maths concepts and get the students really good at them and memorizing some rote facts. The other reason I love starting with my math sessions with mental maths is because I do math straight after recess. So there's always that time period where the bell's gone and you've got to wait for your drabs of students to come in and there's just this like dud time where the students aren't doing anything or you start your lesson and then you've got to repeat your instructions because these kids keep walking in. So I love starting off with mental maths, especially if it's an activity where the kids can just come in, they know exactly what's expected of them, exactly what they need to do, and they can get started on it. So those students, as they're walking in, they go, they get it, they sit down and everybody's learning right from the get-go. And also if you make them engaging and maybe like have a little bit of a competitiveness to them, then it's going to encourage those kids to hurry back from recess and get into your classroom and get started into maths. So let me show you some of the different activities I use because I do love changing it up every single term to make sure that the kids are staying interested and motivated. So in term one, I love to start off with number of the day and I set this display up on a uh, spare board, usually at the front of my classroom if I can find the room. And what you do is just pick questions that you know your kids are going to be able to easily answer. And then as your kids get more comfortable with that, this activity and you start learning about more concepts during the term, you start changing up the questions. So for example, I might be like, okay, they can draw it really, really easily. So I'm going to add a question like, or well, what's the number before it? So I can change this around really easily to make sure that it's really catering for the needs of my students. Now I usually do 12 questions. I can't show you all 12 um, within this camera view, but I usually like to have 12 and I usually just say to the students that they have to get at least the first five questions done. And so I make the first two questions really easily, easy. So I make the first two questions really easy so that my kids who are weak in maths feel like they're achieving something. And then as you go down, I start making the questions harder and harder. And so by the time that I get to the 12th question, I know that there's only going to be about one or two kids in my class who can really get down to that question and are going to be able to answer that question. So that way I'm really, really challenging those extension students, those students who are really, really good at maths. So it's really, really easy to just to blue tack this up or you could use Velcro depending on what your board system is and you just swap out the number each day. Uh, changing the number, you can also do decimals or you could do money, uh, you could do fractions depending on what level your kids are at. So I've got year four fives this year. So our questions were a lot more to do with decimals by the time the, the end of the term was coming up. So we were doing things like subtracting and adding decimals. So it's really, really easy to change up this display and make it easier or harder depending on your students. So I put this up as a display on a whiteboard, but I've seen a lot of teachers also do this on an interactive whiteboard or a TV screen. So you just whack up the template in PowerPoint and then just display it on the screen each day. I would just get students to record their answers in their exercise books, but every Friday I would get them to write it down on one of these little templates instead. And that way I could collect it up, I could mark it and I could see how the students were doing and where they were at. And this would also give me an indication about whether I needed to change up my questions to make them harder or whether I needed to spend a little bit more explanation time with some of them on, on specific topics so I could see exactly where they were struggling or where they were really excelling at. So these are just quick and easy. I think there was about six or eight to a page. Really quick and simple to print up and give out to the students. When I had year ones last year, I decided instead of showing the display up on the board that I would give them a laminated sheet to do the number of the day on with a whiteboard marker. I felt like this was easier than the kids trying to look up at the board, remember what question they were on and then copy it down into their books. Uh, because it was term one and you know they're only just getting used to sitting at desk, I really wanted to make it as easy as possible for them. So this is one of the number of day sheets that I use. And then on the back I had a slightly harder one. So that when I felt like kids were really, really good at the front one and that they were speeding through it really, really quickly, I could turn them onto a harder one so they would still complete it in about the same time as the students on the easier level. 
Now, I would always at the completion of the number of the day activity or time frame, so usually when the first kid finished, I would say, okay, 30 seconds left, and then they would try and race to see how much they could get done, we would go through and we would mark them. So it'd be a very, very quick thing to mark them. I would usually ask for a student to give me the answer. Uh, if it needed explaining, I might get a student up to the board to show us how they got the answer. But it's just really, really quick and simple to start your maths lessons off with. I use magic sponges or magic erasers to clean my whiteboards off. It's really, really quick and easy for the students to use them. So I don't have to stress about, you know, doing an activity that takes 10 minutes and then another 10 minutes to clean off the whiteboards. Uh, you can bulk buy them on eBay if you just go to eBay and type in magic erasers or magic sponges bulk, you can buy them ridiculously cheap. So in term two, my students do mental math sorting strips and it basically goes that you start with the starting strip and then you answer the question that's next to it. So in this case, that'd be five. You find the strip that then has the answer five on it and then you just keep going down and eventually you'll reach the bottom one, which says finish. So it's pretty self-marking and that the kids can see if they have any extra uh, pieces left over or um, if they've used them all up. But I do like to go around and just check and monitor what they're doing or get them to put up their hand when they've finished. And I just do a quick glance or a check of a couple of them just to make sure they've really um, gotten the right idea and they're doing the right thing. And seeing if there's any problem spots for the different students with what they're doing. So you can see it's pretty quick, pretty easy, covering a range of topics. We've got patterns in here, we've got um, number displays, we've got shapes, we've got um, matching the word form to the numeral form. And so this is one that is year one and two, but they also get harder. And I have basically made up sets for a lower primary, so year one, two, middle primary, year three, four, and then upper primary for year five, sixes. And it's all Australian curriculum aligned. So I've taken out the concepts that they needed to know for each year level and um, put them into the sorts. The way that I store them is I get the kids to put the number strip on the top and then they just whack a lappy band over them. Uh, with younger kids like year ones, I find that they have a lot of trouble with lappy bands. So I use uh, fold back clips and I just snap them over the top. And usually what I do with that clip is write the student's name on it. And so when the kids go and hand theirs in at the end of the lesson, they um, put them all in order with their names on them. And then it's really, really quick and simple for me to just take a clip off one and move it to the next sort. So every single day they've got a different one. Every single day their name will basically be in the same spot and they can come, they can grab it, go back to their desk and solve it and, and then bring it back up and put it back. Uh, with my older kids, I still use the fold fold back clips if I want to label their names, but sometimes I just use a piece of washi tape and just stick it on the top one there because that's really easy to pull off and move to another one when I need to. And then I keep them in sets of 10 in little baggies. So you can see this one here is the lower mental mass 21 to 30. This one was 11 to 20. And then I keep these inside a container that I got from Kmart. In term three, I love using mental mass sorting squares. So in this case, the questions are all on the board here and then the answers are on little tiny squares. So you just go through and get the kids to solve each question. Uh, it doesn't matter which one they start with. They can start wherever they want. If there's a concept that they feel um, more confident with, then they're probably gonna start there. So I just go through, they just go through, sorry, and put all these down. So let's see. And then the nifty thing that I've done with these is I really wanted to make them self-marking. I really wanted the kids to be able to see at the end if they've gotten the right answers or not, and if they needed to change anything without asking uh, me for the answer. So once you've put it all together, it makes a little maze. So you can start from one point and you can go through to another point. So the students know that they've got an answer wrong if, if something doesn't uh, match up. So if, say for instance, if we put that one there, and that one there, you can't follow the maze through. And again, I just keep these in snap lock bags. They are just the perfect fit for snap lock bags. And I have these in my classroom with washi tape on them. And I put the students' names on the washi tape at the top. And then I just have them in um, rows like this and the student knows which row to go to, uh, sorry, which column to go to. And then I just move their washi tape from one bag to the next so they know what they're doing each day really, really quick and easy. So the last of the mental math sorts that I have are these puzzles, and these require a lot more problem solving, and that's why I usually leave them until the end of the year. 
So in this case, students are doing uh, number problems or number sentences and uh, patterns, and they have to try and sort out where the different pieces would go. And it's not always going to be the top pieces that they can solve first. And sometimes they're going to have to do a bit of guess and check to try and, and work out where the different pieces go. So they just keep moving things around until they can show that each row is correct. Like that. And then it fits together into a nice rectangle so they can solve it and uh, check it themselves to see if they've got it right. But a final check just across just to check that everything is right is always advised. And done. So again, I just keep these in little snap lock bags and then these sets just go into another one of the containers that I keep all my other mental mess sorts in so that they look really nice in my classroom because they're all matching sets. So the last kind of activity I use for mental maths is what I call timed maths. So if you remember back in primary school, you've probably seen these before, where you would try and answer uh, questions that your teacher would give you, and maybe you had to record the time that it took you to answer those questions, and then there was that really embarrassing session at the end where you'd have to uh, call out your result to the teacher. Well, I don't believe in any of that, so I actually do my timed maths backwards. I set the time that I want the students to spend answering questions, so usually it's about two to five minutes depending on their age range, and they go through and answer as many questions as they can in that time, and then they stop and they count how many questions did they answer, and they come back to this cover sheet here and they can write down, first of all, what level they were on, so you can see at the top here that was level one, and they can write how many questions they've answered, and the idea here is that they're trying to beat themselves each day to answer more and more questions. And then at the end of the day or at the end of the week, depending on how much time I have, I'll go through and mark them. And if the students have got any of them wrong, I actually go back and circle them. So I won't write the correct answer in, I'll circle it. And the students know that the next time they do this, they have to go back and check for any answers that they got wrong and re-answer them. So I give my students only one of these sheets at a time. Uh, I don't want it to seem daunting, like they have too much to do, but there is more levels once they've completed level one, so front and back is level one, then they can go up to the next level. And each level is on a different concept. So here's my display file that I keep these in, and I've always got um, spare photocopies of the different levels, and I've also got the answer keys as well. So this way, if a student finishes during the session, I can just whack out a quick sheet, give it to them, and they can go back um, with very limited time wasted. So level one here is all about addition with low digits. Level two is subtraction with low digits. Level three I did with double plus single. Level four is double plus double. Now here's where you start to say, oh, well, these aren't necessarily mental maths. Like maybe you need to do a bit of calculation to help you work them out. And in that case, I say that's okay. You know, there's a little bit of room that they can use to think there um, to, to plan their working out. But as a whole, it's something that we still expect students to do rather quickly um, at a higher age. So around year three, year four, year five, we're, we're expecting the kids to get quite quick at these. Uh, level five is double plus double with carry. Uh, level six is then on to multiplication with year threes, year twos, and year tens. Level seven, I've, I swapped back to addition again just to make sure they're still remembering uh, all their addition facts because that's what this is really building up is, is rote with their addition facts. Uh, so this is three digit numbers not involving carry. Then level eight is involving carry and I've given them a little bit more room there for some working out. Level nine goes back to um, times tables. So you've got your fives, your threes, your twos. Level 10, I've gone to double digit takeaways, which is quite hard for students. That's why I left it till this late. Then we've got double digit takeaways where it involves regrouping or some extra thinking there. Then some more times tables here with your harder ones like your nines, your fours, your eights. And then going up even higher here with our sevens, eights, elevens, and twelves. And then level 14 is just a whole heap of different ones um, mashed together. And then I've gone back to uh, times plus addition and division. So it's all in the one and they've got to keep swapping their thinking. So there's 15 levels in that that the students can work their way through. Depending on the age of the kids, some kids will get through only one sheet in a few weeks. Other kids will get through three or four. It really depends on the level they're at. 
So that's it, that's all the mental maths activities that I use within my classroom for the whole year. And I've used these activities with year ones all the way to year fives. They're really, really good activities that just go across the year levels. They're great for split classes. I've got a year four, five class this year and it's so easy to cater for diversity and make sure that everyone is feeling just a little bit challenged, but also not feeling like everything's hopeless and they can't do it. Everybody's in their exact zone for civil development and exactly where they need to be. It's a great way to identify concepts concepts that the kids need more work with, it's a great way to review what you've done and it's a great way to get your kids into the mathematical brain and start thinking before your maths lesson. So all the activities you've seen here today, obviously you can make them yourselves, you just need to whip up a template and then put in all the questions, but if you'd prefer to have something that's already done for you, just head over to one of my stores because I have the complete range that you've seen here today in my store that you can download. And then all you have to do is for the sorts, you just need to laminate them. Uh, there are cut and paste versions of the sorts available, so if you'd rather give your students just a photocopied sheet that they cut up themselves and then they paste into a book, uh, they're in my store as well. So I wish you luck with mental maths. I hope you give it a try and thank you for watching. Bye.